What's good, YouTube? This is Admin Umbra back again for another episode of Rocket Daily. Again, thank you all so much for being so fantastic in this opening week for Rocket HQ. It has been an absolute blessing to work with and to serve all of you amazing people in this Pokemon community. Uh, it's such a pleasure to work with you. Uh, and this battle I've got for you today is actually from the stream. Uh, if you're not following us on Twitter, be sure you do so. Uh, if you want to battle me, that's one of your best ways. I'm very active on Twitter looking for battles. But also, that's where we announce the streams. In the streams, we do nothing but battle all day. I got so many battles these next few days coming for you from the stream. Uh, a lot of fun. So please, bring your friends. Let's help the Rocket family grow. Uh, and be sure you're there at the streams because we battle so much. There's a huge place to battle me. Um, if you battle me multiple times, maybe we can even do like a dual com where you help me narrate the battle. That would be really awesome to do. Um, but yeah, this battle is from the stream. Another one of them good old-fashioned cereal box prize teams taking six pokes from the box trying to make them work together. Uh, so what do we got on this team? We got, all right, we have a, a lead Tyranitar. Um, don't be fooled. I know I'm really, really a huge fan of the lead Gardevoir, but actually this is my lead Tyranitar. Um, it's speed investment uh, and attack investment uh, with lefties uh, meant to just kind of stealth rocks, taunt lead. Also super powerful at the Tyranitars. Uh, I love this Gardevoir. I am pushing for this Mega Gardevoir to make a serious entrance to become a real presence in the OU metagame. This is, guess what two beautiful moves Gardevoir has access to? Disable and Encore. Uh, it's beautiful. I'm running Disable, Encore, uh, Wish, and uh, Hyper Voice uh, to try and play some mind games with people. Really, I'm going to keep testing that. I really, really, really like that a lot. Uh, I got kind of a cool Toji Kiss. I'll talk about that later. Good old Choice Scarf, a Chandelure you already know, with, uh, I believe, Energy Ball, Fire Blast, Flamethrower, Shadow Ball, uh, Metagross. I believe this is actually... I don't know which Metagross this is. I have about five of them. We're going to see as we jump into this battle. I have several Metagross I. Metagross is C -S -S -I -S. Not sure which one that is. Uh, and then the good old-fashioned Choice Scarfed with Champ. Looking at my opponent's team, um, the Mega Pinsir. I'm so proud of you all using the Pokemon that we've been uh, showing you the sets on, doing those team-building exercises. Really glad to see Mega Pinsir making an appearance. Uh, some pretty standard OU threats. But the Meloetta, I'll be honest, I very rarely go below OU. So this thing gave me a lot of trouble. You know, at the same time as this battle, I was managing the chat and doing a bunch of other things in the stream. And I'm really, like, I don't think I've ever actually battled Meloetta. My only knowledge of it comes from uh, watching Chimpact. A shout to Chimpact. Please check out his series if you have not, especially if you're interested in the lower tiers. He does a lot of stuff there, Road to Rank-esque things. Um, I've seen him face a lot of Meloettas, um, and that's kind of my only basis. Uh, so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this battle. Um, looking at leads, I really predicted him to lead... Uh, with the Greninja. Because, um, you know, usually when you see Greninja, it is actually the lead Greninja. Obviously, I have my lead Tyranitar. Um, so I do go ahead and lead with the Tyranitar uh, just to see what he wants to do. I do have Taunt in case he wants to go to a Stealth Rocker. Um, but he actually needs with a Gengar. And so I'm like, this is amazing. Uh, because just like the other videos, Gengar's a threat. Lots of sets. We're going to see right now. We're going to narrow down the options. Because right after this turn, we're going to see uh, what happens. So this is a very easy chance for me to get offensive momentum. Uh, the Dazzling Gleam of Focus Blast is painfully obvious. I dodge Focus Blast. I resist Dazzling Gleam. I'm um, Choice Scarfed. Um, my opponent might not have predicted me to be Choice Scarfed. Might have thought I was uh, a Trick Room team. Any number of things that have been going through his head. But I am, in fact, Choice Scarfed. So I do outspeed normal Gengar. Uh, and notice that we saw the sand damage. So the Focus Sash was gone. Uh, we knew this couldn't be a Focus Sash variant. So we would have just one-shot it. Uh, nice and clean off the back with Chandelier. It's one huge threat down already, so we have some great offensive momentum already. Since I go Ninja, obviously we need to switch out. Uh, I believe I actually go into Toji Kiss here. I have had this matchup occur several, several, several times. This Toji Kiss is amazing at taking down Greninja. I know that a Dark Pulse and an Ice Beam is not enough to kill me with Life Orb. Um, and I know you're thinking like, Umbra, you're using a Toji Kiss with your, your T-Wave and your Shin... No, 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 no. You know, if there's one thing about me you should know, it's that, um, you know, I, 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 I love to use those weird creative things I think can make a difference in the OU metagame. And this is actually, instead of T-Wave, we actually want Tailwind uh, to give our entire team a little bit of a boost. Um, so I know I can survive this Ice Beam, go for a Tailwind, and then outspeed the Greninja. So then I can go for a Roost, lose my Flying Typing for the turn, uh, and then the Ice Beam won't be super effective, so I can take it. Uh, so I don't get frozen, thank the Lord. Go for a Tailwind. Now I'm going to outspeed. I can obviously go for Roost, get my HP back to a very nice place. Um, and this whole time he's taking Life Orb damage, which is excellent, uh, just stalling him out a little more. Um, thankfully the Sandstorm does go down, uh, so I can start getting more HP back uh, as I go for the Roost here. Um, so yeah, now I'm sitting very, very pretty. Uh, I know this, this Greninja can't really dent me on this turn. 
And in between uh, the Life Orb and the last turn of Sin was last turn. Um, I know that Air Slash, I can start going for flinches. It'll be a 2 at KO, uh, and with Serene, Grain, I, Serene Grace, I have a really good chance to actually flinch this Greninja. Um, so then we have the Sandstorm stop. I get my lefties. Keep in mind, because of tail, Tailwind, which doubles uh, your whole team's speed. So instead of just having the speed of the one opposing Pokemon, I temporarily raise all of the speed of my Pokemon. Uh, so I do get the flinch with that Serene Grace. Um, I love this Toja Kiss. I really prefer it over the Thunder Wave set, because if I get threatened out, I can very, very easily uh, allow something else to sweep with that Tailwind for a few turns. I'm a big, big fan of it. Um, I also love how it interacts with Roost, and it guarantees me that interaction. Um, I'm never going to encounter things I can't T-Wave, uh, like Garchomps and things of that nature. Um, so the Tailwind does peter out. And then out comes this thing. I have no idea what this thing is. I really, I really don't know. Like, I don't think I've ever looked at this thing's stats. I'm doing 8 billion things in the chat, and I'm like, alright, I've seen Chimpact play. I think I kind of know this thing. And obviously the Thunder Pearl Hacks happens, I mean, hey, it happens. And I, I see this Air Slash, and I'm like, good lord, with leftovers, that is nothing, that is inappropriate. So I immediately start doing a background check on Meloetta, which I really should have done as soon as the battle started. Um, any Pokemon you're not familiar with, you should easily uh, start researching. You can, if you're near a computer, go to Smogon, look up sets for a few seconds. You can also go to the Smogon Battle Calculator. If you click Usage next to that Pokemon's name, uh, you'll see some of the most popular stuff as well. So that was really my fault, allowing myself to go into a battle without some idea of what my opponent was doing. Uh, so I end up losing my Toji Kiss right here, and I'm like, okay. Uh, I'm going to get him to... I'm going to sack my Tyranitar at this point, because uh, I don't desperately need it, because he's going to go for the close combat. Uh, my actual opponent goes for the Relic Song to change forms. I really don't agree with that. With Quad was like quad Weakness, it doesn't matter that Meloetta is really weak in, the, in that form and doesn't get stabbed. I still think the close combat would have obliterated me. Um... I went for Stealth Rocks, just in case uh, to get him up. And I was like, oh, sweet, I just got free Stealth Rocks up. So now the close combat is painfully obvious. And I'm like, okay, I can go back into uh, Chandelure to dodge the close combat uh, and to get a tiny little bit of damage on this thing, even though it does have lefties. Um, and so I'm trying to figure out, this is really the biggest threat to my team. I have no idea what this thing does. I don't know how to play around this. I've never faced one before. Um, I am able to dodge the close combat. And I'm faster, but keep in mind, I do, I, I do a calc. It's part normal type. Shadow Ball won't kill. Um, I don't want to deal with Fire Blastness, and it looks like I won't be able to KO from this range. So I'm trying to figure out, okay, what can I do? So I have an elaborate plan here. Um, I decide to try to get this Gardevoir chance to shine. I go into this Gardevoir because my plan is, um, I'm hoping that because of the thread that Gardevoir is, the opponent will change forms, um, go into the specially defensive form, and then I can get an Encore off to force my opponent to keep changing between the two forms. Um, and while that's happening, I can catch them in the fighting form with a Hyper Voice uh, and, and KO them that way. That is my original game plan, but I really don't appreciate the speed of Me uh, Meloetta and its base form. I thought I would be faster uh, to get this, this uh, Encore off, but I am not faster. Um, I am aware that the Mega, the speed for Mega doesn't transition until the next turn. I wasn't aware of how fast base Meloetta is, though. Um, unfortunately, they go for Thunder, which oh, they get another Parahax. Um, and this is ridiculous. My opponent doesn't miss a single Thunder in this whole battle and gets two or three Parahax. Um, so unfortunately, I encore them into that. So this isn't really the best use of this Gardevoir. I'm going to keep testing this. I really think in the right team, this could be a really, really powerful Pokemon. But here it just kind of just got, that did not go well. Um, so I decide to go ahead and switch out. I'm like, okay, well, it's it's locked into Thunder. Maybe I can go in on Titar now because it's normal Psychic. I can take two Thunders. If I don't get paralyzed, I should be able to one-hit KO with Quench because I'm offensively invested. So in the Sandstorm, I know Sandstorm doesn't lower accuracy, only Sunny Day does for some ridiculous reason. Um, but the Thunder connects. Obviously the sand was up, so I take it really well, but now my sand goes down. Unfortunately, uh, this being my plan B, I, I wouldn't have gone into this as a, as a plan A because I don't get my sand back up because it was still going up. But uh, this is kind of what I have to do now to deal with this Meloetta. Um, so I do take the second one. No Parahax, thankfully. I get the crunch off. It's able to take this thing out. Um, and now I'm sitting much, much better. Everything else in the team is, is familiar to me. I'm very confident I can handle it. Uh, the only poke I'm really afraid of at all uh, is the, the Mega Pinsir. Um, I'm thinking very, very good if I can predict it in the white play. I should be able to KO. Out comes the Mega Pinsir. Um, I was very surprised by this. Um, I don't 
I mean, who would switch a pincer into a Tyranitar? Like, typically, I, you would see Tyranitar's carry, uh, like, your Stone Edge, your Rock Slide. I actually don't, just because sometimes I don't carry moves like that, that people will, uh, you know, assume you have. I carry Taunt, Stealth Rock, Superpower, Crunch. Um, and unfortunately, uh, check out if you haven't, we did uh, several videos on different pincer sets. Um, I'm so used to a lot of the sets that we use actually didn't run Moxie. We make a very strong argument for that. I forget that this thing has the Moxie. Uh, so it gets the plus one on me. And I'm not sure what variant my opponent was running. Um, I'd love to hear in the comments. But they don't go for a quick attack. Uh, they probably they might have gone for an Earthquake. They might not have the quick attack. But I am choice scarfed. So I am able without the priority to KO this pincer. And that was huge. My opponent needed that pincer to, to do some damage to me. Um, I don't know if they were carrying... Close combat, I doubt it since they have the Earthquake. But that pincer was one of the biggest things that could have clinched my opponent to victory. Now it's pretty much locked and sealed. Uh, Talonflame, I have a check for a hard counter, really, for each and every Pokemon my opponent has left. Um, Talonflame comes out, I get the Sandstorm. Uh, this appears to be a, a choice banded Talonflame. I'm not really a, a invested defensively, but still I resist. Talonflame's base attack isn't that high. Uh, that's doing nothing. It's taking all this weak coil from the sand and from Brave Bird itself. Um, and I'm feeling very good. I think I can even leave live another one after lefties. And at 43, it looks like I can. So I go ahead and stay in. Uh, let him go for another Brave Bird. And I do live it with like 5 or so HP. I just barely survive. Um, yeah, but I don't have 5 HP. And then I go for a Crunch on this Town Flame to take it out. Um, and I do want Crunch because I just like having the 100% accuracy moves. And I want Superpower, like I said, for other Tyranitar leads. Although Tyranitar has become much less common than it was uh, in... Poke, the pre Pokebank meta. So I would recommend using a Stone Edge on this set now, honestly. I don't see too often a use for the superpower, but I would I would need to continue to test this before I could uh could make that absolute suggestion. So out comes Mr. Miyagi. Interesting enough, it's not a Magic Guard set, it's actually the Synchronized. Um which has very, very limited utility. Like you could do some things with toxic spikes, but overall it's just there's no reason not to want Magic Guard. Um, I'd love to hear my opponent's case for using this. Um, could have just been as simple as they, they didn't have access to for whatever reason. Um, but now I do go into Chandelure and I have showed that I am Scarfed. Uh, and a Shadow Ball from this range will easily, easily take out the Mr. Miyagi. Uh, which, which actually saw a lot of this Pokemon in our um, the multi-battles on the stream. We had a lot of this, uh, of that actually exact same Alakazam in those multi-battles. But that does in fact con conclude my battle with Joey. Um, so thank you Joey so much uh, for playing with me, for battling me. It is always a huge honor to interact with all the people in the Rocket Nation. Uh, again, this has been Admin Umbra. Uh, this has been Rocket Daily, and I encourage you all, if you are not already, to follow us on Twitter. Uh, tweet at me for battles. I'm always tweeting out when I want battles, so if you want to battle me, stay up to date on that. Uh, also, come to our streams. That's the hugest opportunity to battle us. Um, and don't sleep on the Pokemon Renaissance. Check out our art. Uh, if you have art that you want to submit, please do so. If you have battles you want to submit, please do so. We are all about the community here at Rocket HQ going together as a family. Thank you all so much for watching this episode of Rocket HQ. My name is Adam Umbra, signing off.